Radio Network. Welcome back to Time's Up with the Jane Wayne of Justice, Susan Murphy Milano. Hi, welcome back. Now we're back with Monica Kaysan, founder of the Q Center, on another case. But if you're listening right now, and you know you're a parent, a grandparent, a human being with a heart, every show, you're, the success of these cases of somebody finding someone, of somebody coming up with information, I'm asking those that are listening to spread the word in your church where you work, on your Facebook, on your blogs, post the information from our shows, spread the words, download. Each case, if you will, if, especially if you live in that state or if you have relatives that live in that state, go to the Q Center, go to ncmissingpersons.org, and, and please help us help the families for justice because these are the ones that do not make the nightly news hour. They don't make the nightly crime shows. That's why we're doing this, and I'm not going to be able to do it without your help, and nor are the families, so please. Delilah and I are back, like I said, with Monica Quezon, founder of the Q Center for Missing Persons. Now we're going to bring you the mysterious disappearance of John Morris Jr., age 37, who disappeared, vanished on July 30th of 2007 from Dickerson, Maryland. He was last seen by a neighbor standing at the end of the residence driveway on the afternoon of July 30th. He had not been seen or heard from since. His vehicle, a 1988 S10 Chevy, New Jersey tag FTH, 73Z remained parked at his, at his home. He last spoke to his mother on July 30th. He told her that somebody was coming to pick him up. Morris, who had attention deficit hypersensitivity disorder and a history of depression, sounded distressed during their last phone call and conversation. And his mother, Madeline Morris, who is here with us today, he was not himself. He was angry, depressed, and he was having what what he was, seemed to be having hallucinations or coming in and out of it, Madeline. That's right. So he wasn't coherent with you on the phone? No, it sounded like he was uh, under the influence of something. Like maybe an alcohol or drug. Did he use anything? He didn't use anything, did he? Um, Not that I know of. But you were very close with him, weren't you? Yes. You you talked to him almost every day? Yes. And, And... and he would tell you where he was going. Didn't you find it odd that this time that he didn't say that who was picking him up? I did find that odd, very odd. And and since that time, how long did you realize after this, after the 30th, that afternoon, that he, he was missing? How long did it take before you knew? Uh, three weeks. It was three weeks later. So three weeks later... You you realize, and, and then you go to the police and you fill out a, a missing persons report. That's right. Okay, was there anything to suggest somebody that he was in a relationship with, that, you know, somebody that was angry with him, that perhaps yes. there was? Yes. Okay, and you knew this from his conversations with you? Yes. And, and so but, he would tell you that, was he afraid of this person? Uh, not really, but towards the end, he was. And and then, was he seeing somebody new other than this person? Was he breaking up with this no. person? No. But he was. Did he say why he was angry? Um. Uh, why well, he was angry over the breakup? Okay, so they, yes. so they broke up. Was 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 John starting to see other people? No. No, Monica. How long after um, John Morris goes missing do you get involved in the case? Oh, um, I think uh, it was probably, Madeline, was it 08, maybe 00, I think it was 08 that we got involved? I think so, Monica. Yeah, 2008-ish maybe. Um, and again, you know, um, via internet through through one of our advocates that's with our center, Linda Stovall, she... Uh, she was in touch with Madeline and um, got her case registered with our organization. But um, and then she's done many, many things. Um, but she was involved, actually, you know, helping Madeline get the word out about her son and, and actually brought the case to us. Um, and it was just very, uh, very sad because nobody wanted to uh, really 
tell about them. You know, it was very hard to get it. Even just a newspaper article it was very well, hard. Why, to get why the do you think out. that is? Um, I think, one, because he's a male, and I think that's always a strike. When we have men that are missing, I think it's very much more difficult. I think the the idea of most people in a community think that if it's a man, they're, you know, probably okay. I think we're changing that in the last couple of years in the world of missing people that they are taken a little bit more serious. But, you know, when he got missing at the time frame, it still wasn't really an issue with missing men. Like, people are starting to stand up now and say, and my son is just as important as a female, just as important as a child, just as important as an adult or a mother or anyone else. And so I think people are starting to listen more nowadays and maybe in the last couple of years more than they ever did. Um, but, you know, she definitely struggled with that. He was a male, you know, he was an adult, excuse me, and he wasn't, you know, he, he didn't have this big uh, twist for, you know, anyone to... um dig into and make national story out of. He was just simply, you know, seen, and there are some things in his life that would indicate that maybe foul play indicated in his disappearance immediately, but it just wasn't taken serious. Um, you know, well, he'll probably be back. Is, is it because he, he, he was a gay man, right? He was definitely, he, he, was, he, had, a, he had a partner, um, and I think, believe it was a long-term partner, and um, at one point, I'm sure it was a healthy relationship, but still needs to be taken, you know, serious, and that person needs to be looked at seriously because basically that was the last contact, um, you know, as far as anybody really knowing what's going on. But he had very strong family ties, and, you know, a mother knows. A mother knows when her child doesn't call or their behavior changes or, or you know, something happens that, you know, a parent knows, and that's what made me frustrated with this case is that, it took so long, you know, before she knew to report him missing. You know, no one stepped up. Um, but it also frustrated us because the fact that because he was a, a gay man, no one really cared. Oh, that's the you only know, reason. Like, well, he's, Come he's on. an adult. You, you know, know that. You know, they, they don't, right away when you hear this on any level, what do they say? Oh, forget it. I, mean, I see it all the time, and I don't understand it. A life's a well, life. That's just Yeah, it. they're right down there with the prostitute, as far as I'm mm-hmm. concerned. You know, they get ranked right with, you know, and I think everyone, life is just as valuable as the next person. I don't care if you're the president all the way to, you know, the the person with a drug addiction or whatever it may be. You know, I don't care what level in life you're at. You are a child of someone. You belong to some community. And at one point in time, you know, you had your life together. And if you lose your way or you live a different lifestyle that's not approved by others or whatever it is, doesn't value your life any less, and that's what frustrates me in a lot of the cases. And unfortunately, a lot of the cases we get are those cases that we have to struggle with um, because nobody wants them. They're Look not at intriguing. the recent Meg They're Waterman, not cute and, girl. And, and what, how, which frosted my derriere every time I saw it. What they they precluded, you know, her name before. Every time the media picked up that story of, of Meg Waterman, it was always Craigslist prostitute, and so they come up with a label. Yeah. For each missing person, and they just found her body, the by the way. And it was, you know, and please, right? It's, it, it, they don't understand that the negative labels that they put on on this person, this person belongs to a family that doesn't think of them in that in those terms. No, and it's mm-hmm. very, to me, it's very objectionable to do something like that. So, Madeline, it must have been very difficult for you when you were when you were putting everything together. And I know that you're 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 more mature than than a lot of other people you're elderly and and but yet you put together a beautiful website you you haven't given up every day but but you've been out there as best as you can getting this information out yes and 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 do you have somebody there with you are you pretty much there by yourself uh yes i am by myself right now and and then also what about do, do you does the site take tips that you set up? Uh, actually, Linda from Q Center set up that site. Okay. All right. And, you know, we should talk about his identifying marks because he had some of them. He had uh, such as tattoos on his right forearm. He had uh, um, scars on his right leg calf. Apparently his okay. previous childhood broke an ankle when he was small. His nose was cosmetically repaired. Um, he has caps on his for- on his front teeth, and yeah. you know he, when he disappeared, he suffered from eczema, um, and he's got a piercing on his left ear. In the community, he out- would definitely be identifiable if he was if he was located. Um, 
you know, deceased. There are many um, things that would have helped in, in an identification. Um, but, you know, you can't really find anyone unless you really look for them. And uh, Nobody's really looking. You know, there, there hasn't been the Calvary on this, I can tell you. And, and I understand that it's difficult because you have one eyewitness said, oh, you know, he was standing at the edge of the driveway kind of thing. But, you know, where are all the tips? Where are all the, you know, at least send out a press release every three weeks and ask for tips in the disappearance because you cannot move forward with a search or an investigation unless you get information. And that's where this case hurts and continues to hurt is that the, the initial information has never really been sought hard in the public. But don't you think that the person that did this, and I do believe it was somebody, did this knowing this? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and it's someone that was close to your son, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Um, And Monica, how how much cooperation have you gotten from the police out there? Um, Well, it's, it's, it's 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 not a case that's actively worked. It's like you know, they'll they'll talk to you or, you know, and they'll participate in an interview with, you know, if you get the media. Um, but, I mean, like I said, they, you know, I think they, I don't even know when the last time they were ever in touch with Madeline. Um, but what I'm saying is you need to go back to square one. Start at the beginning and seek that information in the first, you know, couple days. Get that information solid because as far as, to, to the best of my knowledge, in my opinion, there's no good information. Um, you know, and you've got three weeks of stand. unanswered. You've got three weeks of, of nothing. You've got no pattern of conduct. What about a cell phone? Uh, no, I that's that behind. I, I tell you what, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come right back. We're we're coming right back um, with uh, the John Morris case and, Man- and Madeline, her, his mother, and Monica from uh, the Q Center. We'll be right back, please. Hi, this is Michelle with LaBellamy Vineyard. You're listening to Hear Women Talk Radio on the Zeus Radio Network. What's that on your computer? Nothing. I know he's having an affair. I just can't prove it. She gets weird phone calls all the time. I wonder who she's talking to. Do you know what your spouse is doing on his computer or her cell phone? If you want to know, do what the private eyes do. Talk to Steve Abrams of AbramsForensics.com. Steve is an expert in computer and cell phone forensics and a highly regarded attorney. He's the private eye go-to guy, and he's your guy, too. So if you want to know what your spouse or anyone is doing on their computers or cell phones, talk to Steve at AbramsForensics.com. That's AbramsForensics.com. Or just click on the Abrams Forensics banner ad on Hear Women Talk. And for a free 15-minute consultation, use promo code. Hi, this is Deb Coletti, your host of Life on Purpose. Join me at my new time, Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on Hear Women Talk Radio Network. This year brings a whole new lineup of guests, fascinating women and men, sharing their journey to a life on purpose. Unscripted, uncensored, but always entertaining. Tune in to Life on Purpose every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Hello, Hear Women Talk fans. Are you ready for a vacation? How about a carnival cruise? When you're ready to get down or relax and be pampered. Yes, Mom, let me get your fresh power. Or escape to a romantic hideaway. Book your next carnival cruise with Christmas Travel and Tours. Fun, friendly, affordable. Call our friends at Christmas Travel and Tours for your next carnival cruise at 888-950-5849. That's 888-950-5849. Or on the web at christmastravelandtours.com. That's Christmas Travel and Tours because it doesn't have to be a holiday to take a holiday. Carnival. Fun for all, all for fun. Ships Registry, the Bahamas and Bahamas. Hi, this is Jessica Dorvaj, host of the Where Is My Guru show, and you are listening to Hear Women Talk Radio. Blazing the trail, the Jane Wayne of justice is circling the courthouses of America, speaking up for those who have been silenced. Susan Murphy Milano declares, time's up. And now, back to Susan Murphy Milano, because there's never too much Susan Murphy Milano. We are back with Monica Kaysan from the Q Center, and we are back with Madeline, John Morris's mom. And your son has been missing, you know, since July 30th, 2007. John Morris was last seen supposedly by a neighbor 
I don't know if I would go for that account, at the end of the driveway, the afternoon of July 30th. He has not been seen or heard from since. His vehicle, a 1988 S10 Chevy, New Jersey tag, FTH 73Z, remained parked at his home. He last spoke to his mother, Madeline, on July 30th. He advised her that somebody was coming to pick him up, but he never said who. And in my opinion, when you're terrorized of something or someone, and you know that the person's pattern of conduct is to make the phone call to a loved one, Delilah, what do you do? You call. Exactly. And you set the tone. How many times do we do things with the people that we deal with all over the country and the cases that we have? We have to verify it's them. If we don't get the code word from them on a situation that we have in the middle of a situation that's a possible abduction or taken, we have to verify it's them because these people are clever. They'll use the Internet to send a message, to send an instant message. You don't know if that's them. You, you can't see them. Maybe in this case, in John Morris Jr.'s case, maybe the person said you're going to call your mother before you leave because we're not going to do anything that would be outside the ordinary. But yet the person does do that because John only says, I can't say where we're going. Because criminals don't think like that. They don't think of those little details. Well, and not only that, it's... You know, we're looking at a case here where everything that he had was left behind. He didn't just up and walk away. And like Monica was saying earlier, that's what you see so many times when it's an adult male that, well, he'll be back. He just went off to start a new life. There's no law against it. But it doesn't happen. Anyone can go missing. I'm sorry. It doesn't happen. What did he do for a living, Madeline? He was an artist. Artist, that's right. And if we go to the site, he has beautiful it's beautiful. Artists. He was beautiful. very talented and, and very well-known, wasn't he? Yes. Yes. And his works are around the country. Have you been able to do any exhibits for your son? No, I haven't. Maybe that's an idea. Maybe that's something that could be done. I mean, really, a very, and I don't say this, it's like seeing somebody that you don't know that can sing. And when they belt out that song, that Susan Boyle, when she became, mm-hmm. that's, that's how this, that's how John is. John painted in this way so beautifully um i think that that's something you should consider i mean his artwork is beautiful did he leave a lot of artwork behind yes he did and art was his passion wasn't it yes and and he would do anything to do his passion that's right and he would return to it as soon as he could right right and he would lock himself up in the studio paint and come up with a magnificent work of art yes takes one to know one although i'm not a painter as a writer i do i i i mean it's just it's just something and i have a a few friends that are painters that Mm -hmm. uh, paint across the country and that's what they do and there's nothing more than telling their story and putting their words to a brush well and there's nothing that makes you you feel more alive and and more happy than being locked up in that room with with paint and there is no (laughs) way madeline that john morris your son would just vanish is there no. No. Without telling me. And, and but, w- w- was there someone perhaps, do we know this, was there somebody in competition with what he did in artwork or... or oh, no. no. Is that a no? No. Okay. So he was he was in his own right. He was coming back. Was he scheduled to, to do an art show soon? He was, but uh, he never got to it. That's right. And and so, you're, Monica, let's talk about starting at ground zero. We have to start at ground zero on this case, don't we? Pretty much. I mean, need to go back, start all over again, um, you know, do a redistributing of flyers, um, you know, or possibly get a billboard, do something to get the information out that, First, he is missing because it's not even reminding the community he is missing because I don't think most of the community even knows he's missing. Can somebody pinpoint was- for sure that he went into a car this af- that afternoon? Is there, Can that be proven that he ever left the um, house? Well, nothing. I don't think anything. I mean, you just have one eyewitness, so it's and, and that's kind of a little shake out. Madeline, you may know believe that a little bit more than I do, but I mean, pretty much, that's all we know. Is that house still there? Yes. Yes. Is it still in the family? Yes. Yes. Okay, have, forensically, has there been anybody in the house, through the house, um, is it still pretty much intact as as to when he left in 2007? I doubt that. You doubt that. Have you sold the house? No, it's not my house, it was the partner's house. 
It was his partner's house. Okay, we're getting somewhere here now. So he's living still in the former in the person he was in a relationship with, even though I thought they broke up. Right. Yeah, it was his partner's house, I think, prior to the relationship. Okay, so where did the house end up going back to? His partner? Or is it owned by him? Is it in... where? Who owns this house right now? His partner. Okay, his partner. So technically, unless you have a search warrant, you can't get in there. So Monica, as you and I both know, in these cases, when there's a funny something funny going on, there's an abduction, there's a murder, it is interesting to me how the crime scene and this could have been very well a crime scene, is never really investigated and looked at, isn't it? Correct. Yep, it, it certainly is. And, and But it's still there, and it can be looked at at any time. Um, but it would only be looked I'm at with saying. a search warrant. I mean, it would be more yeah. less difficult if the family owned the property. Um, I'm sure that all his belongings oh, and things have been thrown if out. The family had owned the, if the family had owned the property... You know, then every you know, even if even if law investigators didn't want to go in there, they could have gotten somebody in there, and and they never did. Um, no. So anything, any evidence has been cleaned, gone. Three years have passed, and not a goddamn thing. And, th- and that's what's wrong with this. Is this person who was his partner? Is he somebody in the community that people look up to? Yes. Okay. Is he in a capacity of power? Yes. Is he an elected official? No. Okay, but is he somebody prominent as far as a business person? In the medical field. In the medical field, okay. Well, you know, there's a lot to work with here, and as I always say, chances are somebody's listening and somebody knows something. And I I don't have a good sense that he went in a car somewhere. I don't have a good sense. I think that call was just the last act before something. He, um, He could have been, you know, chloroformed he could have been shot up with something his background his behavior your son's prior condition lends into somebody for them to easily say well you know he just took off or you know he wasn't doing very well or you know he has these issues with his health and he gets depressed did a lot of that come out no so this person didn't say that to you no okay and but he's probably thinking about it and thinking that it was going to go away. Have you, have you yeah, talked? I think he really, he never worried from the beginning. It was like, well, he left, you know, and, and, uh, you know, appeared cooperative or I think even somewhat concerned, but not, you know, anybody in a relationship, I don't care if you break up or not, and someone becomes missing for any length of time, you would think, you would think that they would step up and, and you know, help this family. Um, Not if you killed them. You wouldn't step well, up and, and do shit. You do the minimum. Out and try to find answers. I mean, you know, even if, if somebody's... Long, I mean, I've seen families where the husband and wife had been divorced for 15 years, but if something happened to one of them, they would have been right there involved, right. you know, right. and, and concerned because at one point in time, you know... That person was a part of their life, and that's you know. It's that's a lack of con. It's the pattern of conduct, the lack thereof, and that's what you have here. He was easily able to say, as we see in so many of these cases, and I think you know people believed it because he was probably on medication again. His history, oh yeah, he just went, and yeah, I'll minimally help you, but knowing that it's not going to go any further, knowing it's not going to be looked into because this, this was a gay man, this was somebody's life, as we said earlier. And this is wrong, and it's got to stop. And yes, th- this is the bottom line is he's missing. The bottom line is nobody has ever really properly investigated this case. And the bottom line is that people that have any information either need to contact the Montgomery County Police Department at 240-773-6237 or the Q Center for Missing Persons at 910-343-1131 or the 24-hour hotline, which is confidential, again. And that's so important. Nobody's going to come and and tell on you. You're not going to be tracked. Nobody's going to be able to track your cell phone ping towers when you make a phone call. The the number of the 24-hour line at the Q Center is 910-232-1687, or if you want to email me at timesupforjustice at gmail.com, we'll pass on the information. All we want to do each week is solve these cases. If you have a tip, they can also be submitted 
to John Morris Jr.'s website, and that is www.findjohnmorris.com. Again, the characteristics, tattoo or a snake or a dragon on his right forearm, tattoo of a scorpion on his left shoulder, uh, healed ankle fracture. You know, if if I'm a, a medical man, I am good at an understanding disposing um, you know, I, I I know what to do. And so much time, three weeks passes. So from the time that he is last spoken to, and his mother's the only one that can account for him, Monica, that's it. Pretty much, yeah. That's, Th- that's, that's it. The, There's no other you know, when sighting. You, when you come from non-large families, you know, I come from, I have ten brothers and sisters, so you'd have an army after you if I got, you know, something... But when you come from small families that there's not a lot of siblings and aunts and uncles and, you know, what have you, um, it's even harder because you don't have a lot of support. And, you know, and Madeline, you know, they have a very small family and a good group of network of, of people and friends and, you know, and they have been supportive and helping. It's like, what do you do? You know, you simply, you know, you trust that this case is being worked on and, you know, and, and, you know, the officers are, are nice and everything, but at the bottom line is this case needs to go back to day one, just like you got missing today and worked all over again. There's and a killer eating dinner at somebody's restaurant here. Again. There's, there's a killer eating dinner at somebody's restaurant here in, in, in this yeah. area. There's a killer out yeah. there. There's a killer yeah. who who is, you know, hanging out with you all. There's a killer who's probably in another relationship with somebody. There's a killer that is among us, and yet... We don't, as a society, get all worked up on this, and we should, because he could do this again. And and right. are there other crimes out there that attach to this person, medical license or not? Um, you know, there are things in a pattern of behavior prior, maybe the police need to look at, was there ever an order of protection, a peace order, a restraining order, um, on that address ever? Was there ever anything from the time the person left high school? Um, the pattern again. I'm sure that no one has looked at that. That's a very strong suggestion. I'm that that's important, isn't it, Monica? Yes, and and you know too because he was reported so late in the game, you lost every opportunity to get a live scent dog to even see if you know if it was true if he was at the end of that driveway and got in a car or if he walked off or what have you. I I so I I'd, there, I'd take you so to Vegas, Monica, and we would walk. roll the dice, and I'd say, because <laughs> I'd roll it, I'd say there's no way he went into a car that day. There's no way. Because the last person to see him, the last person where he slept, um, again, it goes to pattern. It goes to the last person. Right. And And, you know, Madeline, is there anything you want to say to anybody out there before we say goodbye? Well, the fact that he was gay does not alter the fact that I love him very much. I mean, people have to be more educated on uh, gay... Madeline, you're right, and we're out of time, and thank you and God bless you to our listeners. Please expand our mission by justice for justice by sharing links, spreading the word, questions, comments, case submissions, times up for justice at gmail.com. Please, please, please spread the word on these shows. For Delilah and myself, the cast and crew here at Zeus Radio Network, see you next week. God bless everybody and be safe.